afternoon, everybody. Okay. Good afternoon again. Welcome to this uh, master class on machine learning. My name is Bhupesh Sharia, and I am a CEO of Pages School of Data Science and I'm a director of Muni Campus. We'll be spending another 30 minutes, and uh, I'll be giving you a 20,000 fit view about uh, machine learning, uh, the background of uh, deep learning. Uh, how machine learning, AI, deep learning, data science, they are interrelated, how they intersect with each other, and a couple of use cases, and then we can retake uh, some questions. <clears throat> Great. So, hope all of you are able to really see my presentation. My audio is clear. IT team, can you confirm or any participant? Uh, yes, sir, your audio is clear, sir. Oh, wonderful. Great. So I'll start with uh, showing you a couple of examples of uh, machine learning uh, solutions or models which our student has built at our institution, uh, which will invoke your interest and then we'll uh, take some deep dive into uh, the fundamentals of machine learning. So, this is like generative AI is uh, into Vogue and now we are able to really see what a lot of example of so before I start with AI is example. About, like, let's go back sometime. Uh, where this was 2018. We all used to take a lot of photographs back in the days when these the people film, they have built uh, amazing uh, an image of a generative beach image. AI model. So I'm selecting an image of a beach image. You just have so a look at the video. Our model is trained on uh, romantic novels. So first, let us select something which is relevant to it. So going forward, it takes around 40 seconds to generate the story. So what it does is like this is a we this is a three phase model. So first part is a skip thought model. So it is the, what does it does is like a encoder decoder network. So it's a deep learning model which is based on a romantic story. We have a 14 million passage of book corpus data. We have trained it up, and what it does is nothing. Just capture the semantics out of it in a 4,800 vector, and then there is something called VSE. What it does is like a visual semantic embedding. What it does is like when we upload an image, it gets the image vectors and the captions of it into the same vector space. So we can have a similar cosine similarity to it. It's a bit of technical thing. So next thing is, so whenever we upload, so this is generated. So we have these captions, which is relevant to these images. So we have 100 captions generated to it. But out of which the whatever the top five captions, we are showing it here. And then with that captions, we have generated this story. So as the caption suggests, a silhouette of a person standing in for a sunset over water, this is exactly what it is look like. Then a young person is going to surfing on sundown. It might be that cocoa images. So that's the magic which all of us, we are able to really witness. But uh, the good part, these folks, they did it in 2018. And the similar time transformer network uh, research paper was published. Uh, all you need is attention. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> today, generative models are uh, like everywhere, uh, right from uh, uh, Arshtak's news anchor, AI-based news anchor, to chat GPT, right, to various platforms which actually generates video. And some of the uh, promo videos which you saw uh, before this uh, uh, masterclass were also generated using the uh, gain network. Uh, this is one of the great example, and uh, now the generative AI is ruling the world. Uh, this is another good piece of work our student they did. Just have a look on this. 
So first user have to upload an image where a number plate is visible so that we can validate that this car is registered with an insurance company. So as you can see that number plate has been detected and this is the number plate. Second step is we have to upload an image of a car where damage is visible. So here our image classification and image segmentation model will be working in backend. So as you can see in, an, in this output image that clearly a dent has been detected in the front. And you can see that car it is validated, damage is validated, location is front and severity is severe. And this is our team. So this is essentially to build an automated system which can really you take the photograph through mobile phone and it is able to really detect what kind of damage you have. And uh, typically for uh, uh, car insurance companies. This is another beautiful Our example Shahar to where watch machine it. learning can That's be used. That's a good length ball. And he gets down on his haunches and sweeps this towards boundary. This is automatically uh, auto commentary generation. Uh, this project is close to my heart. This, uh, we took this initiative at ages. And the idea was to stop or eradicate the child trafficking, woman trafficking. And we built this application. And Dr. Suresh was involved into this project. Uh, he's a computer vision expert and a couple of our students. So uh, back-end deep learning model is working, computer vision model is working. What essentially this project does, uh, so before I talk about pro project, uh, the problem in India, like almost 100,000 kids goes missing every year. And uh, most of them, they are forced into bagging trade or uh, organ harvesting, which is such a heinous, uh, unimaginable crime. And uh, so what we try to do in this uh, project, so let's say some children gone missing in Jharkhand. Uh, what you do, uh, you launch a complaint and while you're launching a complaint at police station, the police personnel will also upload the photograph on the system. You can also do that. And uh, <clears throat> let's say complaint was launched and photograph is uploaded into our system. And uh, imagine that you as a aware citizen walking around, so driving the car and you saw some kid uh, uh, bagging on a street on some red light. And you stop the car and uh, you saw him bagging. You just take a click a photograph using mobile phone. And with this app, you upload the photograph. Now, what it does, the magic is started. It, it automatically scans the photograph in our database. And, uh, <clears throat> and if it finds the match, and in this case, you've already uploaded the photograph in Jharkhand Rachi, it will find the match. It will send an alert to a police station from where the complaint was launched. It will send an alert to the police station, which is in nearby location. It will send alert to the parents because it has got the database. It will also send alert to NGOs, which is a nearby location because the children cannot be held at police station. Somebody will come and will rescue. Uh, <clears throat> so this entire software, this entire deep learning model we built, we also gave it this uh, free of cost to government of Goa. And this is as a part of uh, data science and AI for social good initiative at ages. And this is wonderful example how machine learning and deep learning are uh, changing the world for better. So while we all are worried and concerned, will AI will replace human being? Right? Will uh, we'll see the doomsday where an AI is uh, ruling the world. Uh, we are concerned about our employment. Uh, but on the other hand, as a human being, uh, <clears throat> we are also culprit of that. There's something which happens around us, and uh, this has been, we have taken it as a socially acceptable phenomena. And uh, two things, there are several things, but two things which disgust me. One is child trafficking and woman trafficking, which happens around us. 
and we behave as if uh, it doesn't happen. Uh, and these things can be stopped uh, using deep learning and machine learning. And I'm very bullish about that. And to give you a parallel analogy, uh, let's say in, while you drive a car in Mumbai, you trust more on the Google map than the broad. And uh, Google map is nothing, but it's basically uh, aggregation of human intelligence at a mass scale for better decision making. And millions of people, those who are driving, they keep on uploading their real time data. And that actually forms the basis for the collective better intelligence for the other people. This is a crowdsourced intelligence. Now, worldwide, we have roughly around the uh, world population is 7.2 billion, and out of which roughly around 5 billion people have the access to the internet and close to almost 4 billion people have access to the smartphone. Even 5%, 10% people start tagging the photograph, uploading the photograph of missing bodies, missing children. Uh, trafficking becomes impossible because now we will build a global shared intelligent trust network uh, which can really tame this nuisance. Uh, <clears throat> And now these days, you have CCTV camera network in all major cities to uh, track the vehicles, uh, right? And we already have some basic infrastructure. When 5G is coming, we'll have better bandwidth, low latency bandwidth. But today, uh, every kid is able to really watch a TikTok video, YouTube video. You're able to access this uh zoom discussion which was unimaginable like the 15 years or 14 20 years back even though we had the technology but today we have technology we have internet bandwidth we have uh, uh affordable device and uh, fortunately also the citizen is aware and the government has a will so i am very hopeful that this kind of project can really uh, kick off in future as an academic institution, we have a limitation. We can just create this technology, but we can't really implement this technology. We're trying uh, hard closely to work with the government so that they can redeploy. And the idea was before I take a deep dive into machine learning, I just wanted to really show you uh, some practical, uh, exciting use cases which we have built. Uh, um, not just wanted to really show you what uh, open ai or google or microsoft is doing right uh, these applications built by common men uh, common students common professors not extraordinary people in, with limited resources at our lab we are not a government funded uh, institution and we are not iit <clears throat> This is a great business use case, uh, recommender system. And I think all of us, we are uh, aware about, we have interacted with these case systems. Let's see the impact, commercial impact of uh, these systems. Uh, they are called recommender system. Uh, these recommender systems are pervasive, they're ubiquitous here, they're everywhere, right from YouTube to Netflix, to Amazon, to Flipkart, to Snapdeal, everywhere. And let's also try to really understand the kind of uh, commercial impact these systems are generating. Uh, the Amazon generates roughly around two thirds of this revenue through recommender system. When you search for a, a white shirt, it gives you recommendation for the white shirt. It doesn't give you recommendation for the pink shirt. It does precisely the same task which a traditional shopkeeper does. So when you really go and visit a store in the other, and if you ask for the white shirt, the other shopkeeper, uh, shopkeeper will show you white shirt. Mm. Imagine on Amazon, you have 160 million customers. If 100 million, 60 customers need to be served, you will require typically 160 million shopkeepers. If we can maintain the ratio one by one or say, one is to two also you will require almost 80 million customers which is economically uh, not possible it's not scalable uh, and it doesn't really make sense and that's where these recommender systems has come uh, quite handy these recommender systems are built by data scientists 
machine learning engineers and two third revenue uh, you can imagine the kind of revenue impact they can generate like so uh, 515 billion dollars revenue amazon they can really buy a couple of countries in a cash deal two third of that revenue generated by the three computer system is is something amazing something mind boggling so if i am a chairman of the board i can be kick out the ceo in two minutes time but i can't really dare to touch a machine learning engineer or data scientist those who have built this recommender system uh, <clears throat> which is bringing me to third of my company's revenue and that also uh, tells you that why machine learning engineers deep learning engineers ai engineers data scientists have become rock star why they are being paid so high right because they they automate systems they they use the power of machine uh to build scalable systems automated systems which can replace uh work of millions of humans right which also opens the pandora of box for discussion that uh, is ai and machine learning going to really replace us uh, the answer is yes and no both uh, yes it is going to really replace most of the tasks which are repeated tasks uh and that can be done by the machine but also it also uh <clears throat> give us the good feel that humans are not only designed to really work so let machine do the repeated tasks and humans can be engaged into some creative assignments but then it puts a pressure on us that we need to really find out better job for ourselves and that's where our cognitive capability will come handy to us this is another uh, say, uh, report which is published by IDC, which also is, gives us the indication why ML is going to be very important. 80% of all the applications will have some or other AI component. Uh, when I'm saying AI, uh, it's about intelligence, right? Uh, it's about uh, human capability. So if we really see YouTube, uh, 15 years back, YouTube was a dumb idiot's box. Today, YouTube is as smart as our mothers, right? So if we don't like paratha, our mother is able to really sense what do you really like, even without you opening your mouth. And YouTube has gained similar level of intelligence, if not same. If you try to search for Rihanna song, it will start showing you the Rihanna song. If you start watching the machine learning lectures it will start showing you the machine learning lectures so it understand what you like and what you really don't like and start giving you the good recommendation accordingly recommendation whether it is good or bad that's quite subjective but it starts uh, giving you the recommendation now since chat gpt uh, started creating uh, ripples around the world there is a race across the world for almost every application to include some level of uh, language intelligence into their application. We also did, we also build, uh, say, career buddy uh, into our Muni campus platform, wherein a student can really come and ask questions and take the career advices or interview advices. Uh, uh, I run another company called Muni Campus and which provide digital infrastructure. We run India as one of the largest campus recruitment platform, campus recruitment testing. Uh, so we rolled out this campus recruitment testing way back in 2006. And during COVID period, uh, there was a need to conduct the examination while students are sitting at home, not only by corporate, but by also universities. And that's where uh, NITI, National Institute of Technology, uh, in this, they, uh, the director, Dr. Uh, uh, Manoj, he, he approached us and he uh, requested us to build a system uh, through which they can conduct the subjective examination, pen and paper subjective examinations uh, securely. And uh, we had this technology, which is like a 15 year old technology, more than 15 year old technology. But it was not smart and intelligent enough to really do the proctoring. And that is when we added the AI proctoring capability. And what this AI proctoring capability does, uh, it can automatically detect uh, whether 
it's the same person who has registered for the examination or somebody else is appearing for the examination uh, even in midway and pretty smart system and uh, can really bring efficiency because while thousands of candidates are appearing online examination it is extremely difficult or not efficient to really monitor all the examinations while ai as a silent observer can really keep a watch so to give you a perspective uh, we were conducting examination for goa university entrance examination and 10 o'clock the system uh, 10 15 the system gave a flag and when we actually checked we realized that 10 o'clock the person gender was a female location was panji and 10 15 the person gender became a male and location changed from panji to delhi uh so the system is smart right so what idc is trying to really say that yes uh, most of the legacy software so systems which we have built they are pretty rule based and they are they behave like a dummy idiot they don't learn based on the interactions and data and they need to really have some level of smart and intelligence and to do so uh, we need to infuse some degree of intelligence and that can be achieved through only machine learning deep learning and ai and hence every software engineer they need to really acquire these capability and now with this um, emerging competition coming from uh, large language models like chat gpt uh, autopilot right uh, replit they are automating the coding stuff uh, they need to be up into the game they need to be friend of the ai or ai is aggressively moving towards to replace them <clears throat> when we really see about jobs uh, there i i think last week i checked there are almost 24000 jobs available on nokri 9000 ml jobs on linkedin uh, almost uh, 88 thousand data scientist jobs on linkedin 96000 jobs of business analyst uh, why i'm keeping all these jobs in one bucket because most all these jobs require one common skill set that is machine learning uh <clears throat> there's another uh, report which says that uh, ai is going to generate uh, impact of roughly around uh, 15 trillion dollar Uh, to the world economy in next uh, say seven years. Uh, you need to really understand what this fifteen trillion dollar economy means. Fifteen dollar, fifteen trillion dollar is roughly the current China's economy size. India's economy size is almost two point eight trillion dollar. Uh, so it is going to generate wealth of almost five times than the India's economy. Uh, so you can understand the kind of impact ai is going to really create on society on economy on business the kind of opportunity is going to really generate so whether we are in marketing or sales or education or operations or health any area no field is untouched from these things and it just started uh <clears throat> Uh, i'm observing this field for last almost a decade and uh, and the, the pace has picked up in last one year it's going exponential uh, where machine learning is being used uh, right from uh, email spam filtering so when you open your gmail box you will already see that Some emails land into the spam without you clicking on the spam because somebody else has given the feedback to Gmail that it is a spam, right? So uh, based on the interaction, the system is such a smart system that it is learning whether it is uh, spam or not a spam. Self-driving car, which is again an unimaginable phenomena. Uh, the car is uh, driving its own own. based on the sensor online recommended system which i already spoke about uh, <clears throat> you want to really identify what customers are talking about 5g services of airtel just use the twitter api and you will be able to analyze the data of millions of customers within few minutes and able to really see uh, the sentiment of customer 
fraud detection uh, while millions of people are doing the credit card transaction uh, how do system know that uh, it is you and not somebody else so imagine that you are sitting over here and somebody is trying to do the credit card transaction sitting in barcelona now, how the system actually detects in fraction of seconds right and uh, and all of us we must have seen that uh, if you are doing a transaction your transaction limit is roughly around 10 to 15 uh, average ticket size but all of a sudden you try to do a transaction of 40000 rupees online you will immediately receive a call by bank uh, some of these are rule based uh, but uh, most of the credit transactions uh, fraud detection is done by the ml systems cyber security heavily ai uh, deep learning and machine learning is being in cyber security web search uh, the results that you are showing so google has become more of a, not a search engine it is more of a ai company ml company uh, ad recommender system so uh, on what basis uh, uh, Facebook does not, Facebook shows you BMW ad or it shows you ad related to a shirt based on whatever interactions you're having uh, on the Facebook, the kind of network you have, and the kind of posts you're putting, the kind of uh, videos uploading, pictures uploading, the places you're visiting. Based on that, it creates a persona around you, right? Uh, and uh, it know that what product you like what product you don't like what language you're using uh, <clears throat> so there was amazing api by uh, ibm and if you really write a text it is able to really predict what kind of person you are introvert or extrovert but they do they really care what, what kind of personality you have uh, based on your personality they are able to really establish correlation what you're likely to buy and what you will not buy uh, unfortunately the best of the brain in this world they are not solving the great problem but they are trying to really figure out which ad you're likely to click <laughs> and not uh, <clears throat> so a lot of uh, money which is being invested in ai ml is uh, uh, it, it has the need generated from the ad generation recommendation by business right credit scoring system um, a predictive maintenance right uh, uh, so while i was working on a plant we used to have the periodic maintenance now these days periodic maintenance has gone uh, now we can really base we so we have sensors we have iot devices uh, installed or put in into the various parts of the machine uh, we are taking the data from the SCADA system, PLC systems, and we are able to, in real time, able to really analyze uh, when this system, when this machine is likely to go down. Uh, we collect the uh, temperature data, pressure data, vibration data, and just like human being, uh, we could really sense that, yes, some uh, off noise is coming, and we can really tell that something is missing in this uh, machine. Uh, these uh, machine learning algorithm, deep learning algorithms can really uh, combine the insight uh, and find the pattern from various data sources. Uh, they can really hear those uh, noises and tell us when you will require to do the maintenance with or that machine goes down to the for the breakup. So the thousands of use cases uh, which companies are deploying using uh, as far as machine learning deep learning and data science is concerned now <clears throat> let's go and try to really see uh, some definition of machine learning so machine learning is nothing new uh, machine learning is a subfield of ai and ai is a uh, to me, it's a more of a philosophy uh, <clears throat> which scientists caught upon. The idea was to, uh, in early 50s, scientists thought, how about uh, making machines to do tasks which are simple to human beings? And that quest led to creation of an AI. 
So it is a subfield of AI and it is a data science technique. Data scientists actually use extensively machine learning to find the pattern in data. But uh, what machine learning essentially does two things, uh, find the pattern in the data so that we can re predict about the future event. Second, it can build smart systems without rewriting the code. Now, let me explain you further. So I gave you the example of a spam filter. A spam filter, those who have written code for detecting the spam, they, they don't keep on rewriting the code uh, whenever they encounter a new situation. Uh, because if they have to redo, then it becomes impossible to really keep a track of code and the code becomes bulky. So they created a program, uh, right? They, and they, the model uh, algorithm was feeded with the data of spam emails and not spam emails. And the model tried to really learn that what are the features within an email or what kind of words or subject line uh, generally spammers use? And it learns. And based on that, it learned behavior. It creates a rule engine, which also keeps on updating, by the way. And, and now <clears throat> this model is sitting over there. Model is nothing, it's a bunch line of a code algorithm which is trained on the data. And it is sitting on the Gmail server. Uh, now based on that, any email is coming, it is going through this and it's classifying the spam and spam. Let's say I receive some email and I click, I find that this email is a spam. And similarly, 10 other people or 20 other people also click uh, identify that particular email as a spam. Then this learning goes back into this data is feed back into this model. And then the model learns itself. So traditionally rule-based systems, rule-based software were written certain rules. And every time rule changes, then you have to really rewrite the code which is kind of a limitation in terms of really building up a scalable software. And that's where machine learning comes into the handy that you don't have to explicitly program, uh, rewrite the program, uh, the system, uh, the, you can really design the smart software which can really learn based on the data. Uh, let's try to understand this from mathematically. So, Machine learning is nothing. It's essentially uh, is a way to you try to map the input data and output data. You try to uh, identify a mathematical function. So let's say you already have established mathematical equation for uh, speed of a car, right? Uh, which is distance divided by time. So speed is a function of distance and the time. Likewise, Newton has also come up with equations for force, uh, gravity, right? And uh, it took 7,000 years for human being to come up with some functions, some equations to establish the relationship between the natural laws. And still, we are able to really figure out relationship of few things. There is still infinite things for which we don't have any understanding about the relationship. And uh, because, and why so? Because we don't have any mathematical formula. Uh, we, we don't understand a lot of things, how they really work. Uh, even some, Things which is quite a common sensical to us, let's say, example, uh, price of a house. Uh, we know that price of a house is a function of the size of a house. And we know that there is a linear relationship. 
but beyond a certain point that renewal relationship goes for the toss but let's say it is not so house of a price is function of a size of the house but it is also based on certain other factors or features which could be number of bedrooms amenities uh, distance from the railway station which is typically in mumbai the location the society and the age of the house right so a 5 year old house uh, and 150 year old house so if there is three houses 150 year old 5 uh, year and 20 uh, year old so a question to all of you which house will be more costly 150 year old 5 year old or 20 year old which house will be more costly you can use mic or you can use chat at least give me sense that i am talking not to robots to human beings it is it is 5 years 5 year okay good anybody else so recently just last week there was a bungalow in south bombay uh, and birla group bought that bungalow it was sold on 150 uh, it was sold on 250 crores and that bungalow was uh, more than 100 year old so uh, the lowest price uh, house will be perhaps a 30 year old not 150 year old Uh, because 150 year old to 100 year old property will be declared as a heritage property of course it depends on the area to area but let's imagine the area is constant let's imagine this is only south bombay so 150 year old house will cost you more than the 5 year old or 30 year and the lowest price will be 30 year so not necessarily that uh, most of the time the relationship is going to be the linear uh but even in this such a simple problem wherein we have to predict the house and we know on what parameter this house price uh, is dependent on still we will not be able to create a equation right uh even the linear equation so if we try to really map a linear equation which is cost of the house equals to the size of the house multiplied by some constant Uh, or some weight plus uh, location multiplied by some other weight or importance, some error function. So we these weights, these constants, these slopes are uh, unknown to us, right? And identifying these uh, number, these constants is also complex and difficult. Uh, this is typically in the house price prediction case, but let's imagine. that uh, you have to create a function to identify whether it is a cat or a dog uh, if you have to really write a code uh, it is going to be very bulky code and it is like, going to be extremely difficult task to write a rule based code to identify or distinguish between cat or dog or white or black uh, or maybe a male or female or let's say if you have to really build a model to distinguish a voice of your father and your mother right uh, giving a mathematical model is extremely difficult and why we need to create a mathematical model because machines only understand the language of zeros and ones and if you have to communicate the uh, with the machine we need to really create a, a rule we need to really uh, get a function uh, which can really do a data representation in again zeros and ones and that the reason we need to really arrive to a mathematical equation or uh, a function uh, equation function both could be similar or quite be different but i am loosely taking this freedom <clears throat> so so the idea of so machine learning is basically you can term it as a, it is a google of identifying the relationship between a output and input or it is it is a it is a search engine machine learning is a search engine of identifying the function between the input and output let's put it this way a simplified function 
and it can really do extremely well and specifically neural networks is is extremely powerful in terms of really finding the relationship between anything anything absolutely anything and everything provided you have the data which our human mind is uh sometime is powerful is capable of establishing the relationship but is extremely poor in term of explaining it to others or quite inefficient in term of really uh building up a mathematical model and writing it down on the paper and conveying it to the machine we are extremely poor so uh, we do the mathematical calculation intuitively and our brain is very powerful and that's how we are able to really cross street alive millions of times without hitting the car so our mind is able to really see or even a dog is capable to see that at what speed car is coming and at what speed the dog need to cross the street uh, without dying uh, but neither dog nor human being can really write what equation which is going inside our head and what basis we are doing those calculations and and that's where we have a difficulty when we have to really communicate to the machines and that's where machine learning uh, has come up as a power weapon or a tool or technology or a framework or methodology which is able to really help us to communicate with the machines uh, based on the data uh, hope it makes sense uh, to you okay so enough of uh, conceptual background on the machine learning let's see what machine learning is capable of doing so in next 5 minute you will be able to understand what machine learning can really do what kind of questions it can really answer so machine learning can answer you this question very efficiently which is kitna deti hai there is a, a good ad which comes on television how much how many and uh, machine learning is quite capable of answering this question what will be the price of uh, stock of tech mahindra how many patient will be admitted in hospital if this is speed corona grows uh, how many number of speakers mumbai will have in next say 10 years what will be the india's population in next 5 year right uh, what will be the sales in next quarter right uh, what will be the revenue of amazon in next one month how many students are likely to take admission in mumbai university what is likely to be pass percentage just to give a minute excuse me Right. so any question which has got uh, any numerical value attached uh, we can use uh, supervised learning uh, regression technique uh, to identify that right uh, how much rainfall mumbai will have uh, till 15th of june or what will be the rainfall in mumbai till 15th of uh, july and we can really take the count of past historical data and we can really build a regression model regression is there in statistics for last almost 200 years uh, didn't change but very powerful technique and uh, most of the work in machine learning is uh, is also related with regression the another kind of question it can really answer is is it a ram or a shyam is it a donkey or a horse is it a cat or a dog and this comes quite intuitive to human being right uh, and uh, how do we really know that this is a cat and this is a dog this is a white this is a black because we have been taught right our mothers taught uh, uh, school taught uh, everywhere we have learned and and that's how it uh, we we build this kind of uh, pattern recognition in our mind and we can really easily classify 
but teaching the same thing to machine is extremely difficult and we took almost 70 years to uh, reach at this level that now machine has surpassed uh, human level accuracy as far as object recognition is concerned All right so if you have to really train machine you give 100 images of cat 100 images of dog just like a human being we're taught and machine will be able to easily classify whether it is a dog or a cat right. <clears throat> uh, the another kind of uh, questions or problems it can really uh, solve is if you have to really create a cluster or if you have to really create a group or in marketing term which can we can really say segmentation so how do we really organize it so you have say 350 million customers data of airtel uh, can you really segment this data based on it could be based on multiple factors data usage their arpu their billing their location their gender right but what be the most efficient way of actually creating the group right and the clustering algorithms can really do that uh, the next uh, problem or questions which we can really ask uh, is it a weird behavior or is it a normal or abnormal behavior is the deviation from the uh, baseline behavior and our mothers are extremely good so if you walk inside your home uh, even at midnight uh, and keeping your face straight uh, and your mother will be able to distinguish uh, there is something wrong um, you're drunk uh, even you don't open your mouth um, because she has uh, data about you what is your normal behavior and what is your abnormal behavior and any deviation from that normal behavior baseline behavior she is able to identify and not because she is your mother but at the same time she has also collected a lot of data about you even when you were not born likewise machine can also build a model a baseline behavior and if any deviation happens it can really give the indication where do we use anomaly detection fraud detection so there is a canadian company which has also built a model, a uh, machine learning model. So let's say if even somebody steals your phone, even they have your user ID and password, and if they try to do the transaction from your bank, it will be declined. Why? And the, the reason being they have also not only, they have trained the model based on your demographic data, but at the same time, they have also train the model on your behavioral data. So behavioral data is like, how do you really touch your phone? How much pressure you're putting while punching your password? How much time you're taking to actually punch in your user ID and password? And any baseline deviation uh, leads that there is some, something is fishy, something is abnormal, and it, it really blocks you, right? And the next kind of stuff is, question is, what should I do next? and that's where reinforcement learning which is again kind of machine learning used and it is typically used in uh, gaming it is used in driverless car uh, autonomous vehicles right robots uh, reinforcement learning is essentially works on the uh, reward and penalty mechanism and uh, uh, humans are extremely good of uh, this uh, reinforcement learning so if you have to really tell a child to bring the water uh, and if you put a reward that if you give me water, I'll give you a chocolate, right? And that reward actually uh, encourages child to bring you the water. And same thing can really work for passing the examinations and other stuff. And the same concept is being uh, used in reinforcement learning. And uh, the models can really learn pretty fast. Any questions? So, uh, machine learning could be supervised learning. Uh, in supervised learning, you have data, you know the answers, and you know the questions. So uh, you have the data, input data, and you have the output level. So you know if this image is of cat or this image is of dog. So you, if you feed, then if you feed unknown images without any label, it will be able to really label it, right? So supervised learning, just like in a class, 
or over here this is more of a supervised uh, learning class so you have a class of algorithm which are fall under the category of supervised you have uh, unsupervised learning which is kind of a clustering then uh, you have point of semi supervised learning and then you have a reinforcement learning now what are the building blocks of a machine learning uh, so first you need a problem what problem you are trying to really solve even before the model then you will uh, you need to have the data right because without data you can't really build any machine learning model then the third thing you will require is to take a leap of faith and you need to really say that okay uh, <clears throat> let's start with a linear model right let's start because you will need a mathematical function which need to be trained and you don't know what that mathematical function is you don't know what relationship is so you will take a leap of faith you will start with a linear model and then uh, you need an objective function or a cost function because uh, you have to essentially keep on reducing the error so let's say uh, you predicted the you have the data of stock price uh and uh, you and the stock price should have been say say 1500 and the model gave a prediction of uh say 1200 rupees so there is an error of 300 rupees and this error 300 rupees need to be reduced down so your objective function your cost function is to reduce reduce down the objective function and uh, then you will require a optimization algorithm which will try to minimize this cost or minimize this error which is 300 and ideally it should be zero but in all practical senses the op optimization algorithm is to minimize this error uh, so <clears throat> summing up you need to have the problem and to solve that problem you need to have the data and then you need to take a leap of faith and then think about a function or a model from which you can really start with and then you decide about what should be your cost function uh, in any linear regression model typically you pick up a mean squared error or a classification cross entropy right and then you need to find out the optimization algorithm which will reduce down the cost uh, so you can take uh, gradient descent kind of optimization algorithm right uh, <clears throat> so these are the typical building blocks of the machine learning and then once your model is being trained uh, you'll validate the model right and then you'll try to uh, deploy this model into some uh, life system right uh, so let's say you build a model to predict the house price uh, but model is nothing now you rely that model is a bunch line of a code uh, uh, which is trained on certain data and this code need to be sitting on some website or a mobile app or a website wherein user can really interact with uh, put in the location uh, put in the size of the house and they can really get the price and to do so you also need to really master the art of uh, cloud platform so that you can redeploy and that's where the full stack machine learning engineer or full stack data scientist uh, concepts come into the picture now here in this table which briefly gives you some idea that which algorithm is used for which kind of uh, problems you can read it so typically uh, linear regression can be used for house price prediction logic regression can be used for uh, churn prediction so we did a churn prediction for uh, one of the leading telco here in india and we did try predicting for churn prediction for 10 million customers and we use spark machine learning library which is useful for large scale data decision tree which is quite uh, natural to human instincts and uh, decision tree 
is being used for uh, diagnosing the disease and that's how the doctor in the real world takes the uh, decision so he asks you okay are you coughing what is your temperature uh, are you feeling hungry or not and based on uh, different bit size data input it takes and then it tries to really eliminate uh which is not possible and try to really capture which which is the possible disease you have uh so it is a tree like structure you build and uh, it is very simple uh and old uh, model uh, which is quite efficient and this is explainable uh <clears throat> random forest is a further extension of decision tree you combine the multiple trees and then you take the aggregate uh, decision of those multiple trees right and you can use for spam emails uh, right uh, svm is used for classifying handwritten digits from the images uh, <clears throat> and uh, the us postal department did it, used it efficiently uh, for identifying the zip code Uh, K-means clustering is a, is a again wonderful uh, algorithm used for uh, clustering. It is used for uh, unsupervised learning. You have PCA, uh, right, which is for dimension re reduction, right? Uh, CNN, uh, which is a convolutional neural network. It is a uh, extremely good for uh, image analysis right and it has become quite powerful in last 8 10 years and uh, thanks to professor jeffrey hinton in university of toronto and his student uh, ilya who is now the uh, main contributor in terms of building up this uh, chat gpt and these folks they have pioneered uh, in this uh, field and cnn has surpassed the human level accuracy uh, in terms of uh, object detection or image classification okay so what kind of tools are there uh, to do machine learning so you can use r language you can use python both are open source then you have uh, matlab which is a proprietary software right and then you have a spark mlive which can really do large scale machine learning then you have uh, ml over azure uh, ml over uh, amazon uh, you have google tensorflow prediction.io so these are the cloud platform which uh, you they will provide you uh, a platform wherein you can retake really your code deploy it and consume into any application they also give you a lot of pre trained models for uh, facial recognition uh, language modeling and these are pre trained models what it essentially mean that uh, you don't have to grab the large amount of the data and train your models which is uh, complex from the both point of view of computation and moreover uh, uh, getting the date hold of the data Uh, this problem they have solved so pre trained model you can train on your smaller data and use for your uh, any particular applications uh r was quite popular till 2016 2016 17 onward uh, python has surpassed and now python has emerged as a king of uh, machine learning or maybe data science how to acquire these skills learn python or r language uh, to be good at machine learning you need to really be good at calculus algebra uh, you need to be very good in linear algebra you need to understand calculus derivatives uh, right which is essential component of optimization algorithms uh, you need to understand the matrices because uh these are data representation uh, you will be feeding the data any image is uh, can be converted into ones and zeros and can be represented by the matrices so uh, if you're feeding the cat image uh, 
you can't directly feed cat image to the machine machine will understand in zeros and ones and for that you need to understand what is matrices matrices multiplication uh, probability statistics is very essential so these are basically form the basis if you are good at these then understanding and digesting the concepts of machine learning deep learning becomes much easier otherwise it just goes off your head uh, you can also uh, take up a course uh, which is offered by ages which is certified machine learning engineer which gives you exposure on python machine learning uh, machine learning over azure aws uh, deep learning cnn all these kind of stuff uh, with a lot of practical exposure which is a four month program you can do a lot of hands on uh, project uh, yourself you can also explore our uh, uh, program pgp in data science business analytics and big data uh, and another program applied pgp uh, pgp in applied ai machine learning deep learning uh, both these programs have uh, quite in depth uh, <clears throat> concept on deep learning machine learning but uh, pgp and applied ai also covers uh, additional components let's spend another 2 minutes to understand deep learning which is in vogue everybody is talking about deep learning uh, this chat gpt which is built on transformer network which is uh, uh, a kind of a deep learning uh, model uh, deep learning is a subset of uh, machine learning and it is built on the neural network. Uh, let's take a pause and try to understand what neural networks are. Neural networks are basically uh, inspired from uh, human brain and our brain has got billions of uh, neurons and these neurons get activated uh, once we are exposed to new data or a light or any other thing. And that's how the data uh, moves uh, between the neurons and that's how we are able to take the decision and that's how we are able to really comprehend the world around us and uh, neural network is extremely good in hierarchical representational learning uh, <clears throat> and uh, this uh, computer neural network is uh, loosely based upon how our brain functions still we don't understand completely how our brain functions but whatever the little understanding we have uh, we have been able to create this so powerful neural network and again thanks to professor jeffrey hinton uh, who is a professor at uh, university of toronto and he's a godfather of machine learning deep learning and uh, <clears throat> he brought this deep learning into the limelight in this 20th century also deep learning is there in the labs uh, for last say almost 70 years uh, and first perceptron which is basic unit of neural network uh, came in mid 50s but uh, world took so long and and dr jeffrey hinton was uh, of this proponent that if we have to really study and build uh, AI, we need to understand uh, the human brain, and which is kind of quite fuzzy. And then based on that, we will be able to really do some revolution in AI. You know, Tom like a kind of a madman, but he kept on pushing, doing research for last 40 years, and he saw the result in 2012. And his student, Eliza, has uh, been the major contributor in building up this chat GPT at OpenAI. So what a uh, neural network is capable of? Uh, neural network is capability is infinite. Uh, neural network can uh, automatically detect the uh, features. So classical machine learning, which you discussed uh, in previous slides, you need to actually tell which feature is important. Just like in house price prediction, you need to tell that uh, house price is a function of um, size of the house or uh, amenities or location. Uh, these are the features which is important. Uh, but imagine when you are trying to make sense out of the image uh, of a dog or a cat, uh, 
uh, how you will decide and determine which feature is important or not right features are like uh, nose eyes color right texture of the skin now, these are the features but uh, one of the most uh, one of the major difficulties actually uh, writing down those features right uh, in your language and the second is quantifying those and how do you know which feature is important and which feature is not important and that's the major limitation of machine learning where in neural network since it is extremely good in hierarchical representation neural network does it automatically so when you build a neural network neural network is in a multiple layer right and that's the reason we called it as a deep learning so you have input layer and you have multiple hidden layers and then the, you have the output layer and these hidden layers between the input and output layer uh, is extremely good in terms of really identifying in hierarchical fashion uh, in terms of uh, taking and understanding uh, the features in hierarchical fashion let's say for example if we give uh, images of a cat and dog and perhaps in first layer they will try to really, uh, try to really understand the edge right and the second they'll try to really understand the uh, uh, nose right or or the texture of the skin right so they 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 learn the multiple features in in different phases and automatically they are able to really decide which feature is important and which feature is not important right and they do it uh, in automatically fashion in such a beautiful way and very efficient way which classical machine learning is not capable and the the way this is structured uh, they are so powerful that they can really learn anything and they can approximate any kind of function and that's the beauty uh, but deep learning requires a huge amount of the data and uh, a large processing power which was not available earlier uh, thanks to cloud computing and uh, gpus provided by nvidia uh, which was made possible in last 10 years right and with high availabilities of the gpu cloud computing processing power the large huge volume of the data generated through the internet made it possible so uh, you 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 feed this large data provide the large computational resources and then the neural network can really learn any kind of function they can establish any kind of relationship uh, the billions of dollar funding which has gone to open ai by microsoft uh, and majority of the funding has gone into uh, the cloud computing infrastructure which and uh, this funding is basically a credit funding right uh, uh, to use uh, the azure cloud infrastructure resources right? <coughs> It is, it is computational, it is very high cost the proposition. These are the couple of projects which we are driving at uh, AGIS. If you guys are interested, you are most welcome to contribute specifically in this uh, Kojo project. Right? We are trying to really build automated interview uh, grading system. We are trying to build a job recommender system. Right? Uh, uh, so we're doing a lot of uh, good exciting work uh, if you want to be part of that you're most welcome right so last a piece which anyway i have touched upon uh, what is ai ai is more of a uh, human desire to bring machine closer to the human being uh, and that's where the ai uh, got into the picture but AI is, is a combination of multiple things, how uh, combination of multiple technologies. So if you have to really teach machines in terms of doing predictions, identifying the pattern, uh, you are able to do through the machine learning and deep learning. Uh, if you want to give machines capability of reading, and that capability comes through the uh, natural language processing. 
you want machines to speak just like a human being that capability come from the speech to text text to speech uh, systems and technology uh, you want machines to uh, look around the environment and learn that capability will come from the computer vision just like human being has got the natural vision you want machines to dance like a humans uh, you need to give uh, the capability just like a robotics this capability comes through the robotics so whatever today you are seeing uh, the ai uh, technologies outcome it is essentially around machine learning natural language processing uh, and some bit of uh, vision and robotics but these are very specialized ai narrow ai uh, still we don't have reached to a level of building up uh, general intelligence ai Uh, but the way the progress is happening i think in another 10 to 15 years we should be able to really reach that level <clears throat> okay uh, these are two good white papers you can really download and you can really read and you'll get some idea now now i'm done with session if you have any questions feel free to ask maybe perhaps in next master class uh, we'll go uh, we'll take a deep dive into uh, the different algorithms but i thought in the first class uh, this will be nice to really give you uh, some 20000 fit overview uh, you, you have any question you were telling around certain <laughs> that the light uh, resources of lightning what exactly they are no come again harsh <clears throat> you were telling around certain resources of lightning two two books or something like that <clears throat> yeah so uh, there are tons of uh, so yes let me just share so the two white papers which we have published along with deloitte okay. uh, you can download those white papers just take a screenshot Okay. Let me just share. You can take the screenshot of this. Okay. Right. You can download just Google it, and you'll get these white papers. So you can send an email. Uh, challenges and solutions to improving understanding of data. That's that's the uh, right. Yeah. Data science transforming the ICT domain. Okay. Uh, data, data science, science, machine learning, deep learning—they all are quite interrelated because data science heavily relies on machine learning. Okay. Thank right. you, sir. Uh, you will find a lot of tons of resources on uh, YouTube or uh, Google. Uh, you will find a lot of open source books are there. Right, uh, go and refer. <clears throat> Any question you have in mind? great so thank you thank you so much for patiently hearing and uh, we'll see you in next uh, master class and there we'll take a deep dive into algorithms thank you bye bye thank you sir thank you yeah thank you Presenting you the top five reasons why the postgraduate program (PGP) in data science, business analytics, and big data offered by Aegis School of Data Science is a top choice for students. Number one, most comprehensive curriculum. The Aegis PGP in data science is designed to provide students with a comprehensive understanding of data science, business analytics, big data, and AI. The curriculum covers a wide range of important topics. 
including building a strong foundation in statistics, probability, linear algebra, and calculus. The use of Python as a coding language for data analysis and model building. Practical exposure to machine learning, deep learning, and natural language processing for finding patterns in structured and unstructured data. The use of powerful visualization tools such as Microsoft Power BI and Tableau for data storytelling. Data management with SQL and big data technologies like Hadoop and Spark. Hands-on experience with model deployment on cloud platforms such as Microsoft Azure and AWS for making you full-stack data scientist. This comprehensive curriculum is essential for a successful career in data science and will help students stay ahead of the curve in the field. The program is taught by experienced faculty members who have both industry and academic experience, personalized mentoring by industry experts, alumni, and faculties. Another key advantage of Aegis School is the emphasis on solving real-world problems, build and showcase data and AI projects and solutions to the world, and launch career. Students work on projects such as COZO for preventing child trafficking, developing a system for detecting potholes on roads, building a job recommendation system, conversational bot for insurance company, fraud detection in KYC process, AI proctoring software for cheating prevention in examination, etc. Additionally, students will also gain experience in analyzing data to uncover meaningful insights. As a student at Aegis School of Data Science, you will have the opportunity to network and interact with some of the most prominent leaders in the fields of AI, data science, and analytics like Dr. Schmidt Huber, the father of modern artificial intelligence and the creator of LSDM, Dr. Fayyad, the first chief data officer, and many more. One of the key reasons for choosing the Aegis PGP in data science is the outstanding placement opportunities facilitated by the Career Management Center. Since 2015, numerous graduates of over 40 batches, including 18 full-time and 22 weekend programs, have successfully secured positions such as data scientists, AI engineers, and business analysts, with starting packages ranging from 8.5 lakhs to 40 lakhs and a potential for up to 500% salary increase from their previous package. Aegis alumni are working with 500 leading corporate and startups like Deloitte, E&Y, KPMG, Reliance Retail, Morningstar, Nielsen, Red Hat, Go Air, Ford Motors, Teradata, Autos, Accenture, Vodafone Idea, Lenovo, Shoddy.com, etc. Don't wait, you can also launch your career in data science, analytics, and AI. Take positive step today. Explore PGP in data science offered by Aegis at aegis.edu.in. Welcome to Aegis School of Data Science the best school for postgraduate program in data science, business analytics, and big data. We will work on live projects from the industry. Curriculum design with the help of top data scientists and companies. Hands-on exposure to machine learning, stats, deep learning, NLP, Google TensorFlow, Spark, IBM Watson, AWS ML, and many more. Highly satisfied students with amazing reviews. Program delivered by the best data scientists. Program follows globally acceptable North American credit structure. Proud alumni working as data scientists with leading organizations. Participants can get opportunities for internships and final job placement with leading organizations. Aegis organizes Aegis Grand Bell Awards, Aegis Largest Data Science Congress Deep Learning Summit, Meetups, and Leadership Speaker Series. Network with the best data scientists and AI experts from around the world. Present your projects to the world. World-class delivery infrastructure and cloud learning management system. Three delivery models, full-time, executive weekend classroom, and online live interactive. Add wings to your career and explore today at www.aegis.edu.in.
am presenting you the top five reasons why the postgraduate program, PGP, in data science, business analytics, and big data offered by Aegis School of Data Science is a top choice for students. Number one, most comprehensive curriculum. The Aegis PGP in data science is designed to provide students with a comprehensive understanding of data science, business analytics, big data, and AI. The curriculum covers a wide range of important topics, including building a strong foundation in statistics, probability, linear algebra, and calculus. The use of Python as a coding language for data analysis and model building. Practical exposure to machine learning, deep learning, and natural language processing for finding patterns in structured and unstructured data. The use of powerful visualization tools such as Microsoft Power BI and Tableau for data storytelling. Data management with SQL and big data technologies like Hadoop and Spark. Hands-on experience with model deployment on cloud platforms such as Microsoft Azure and AWS for making you full-stack data scientist. This comprehensive curriculum is essential for a successful career in data science and will help students stay ahead of the curve in the field. The program is taught by experienced faculty members who have both industry and academic experience, personalized mentoring by industry experts, alumni, and faculties. Another key advantage of Aegis School is the emphasis on solving real-world problems, build and showcase data and AI projects and solutions to the world, and launch career. Students work on projects such as COZO for preventing child trafficking, developing a system for detecting potholes on roads, building the job recommendation system, conversational bot for insurance company, fraud detection in KYC process, AI proctoring software for cheating prevention in examination, etc. Additionally, students will also gain experience in analyzing data to uncover meaningful insights. As a student at Aegis School of Data Science, you will have the opportunity to network and interact with some of the most prominent leaders in the fields of AI, data science, and analytics like Dr. Schmidt Huber, the father of modern artificial intelligence and the creator of LSDM, Dr. Fayyad, the first chief data officer, and many more. One of the key reasons for choosing the Aegis PGP in data science is the outstanding placement opportunities facilitated by the Career Management Center. Since 2015, numerous graduates of over 40 batches, including 18 full-time and 22 weekend programs, have successfully secured positions such as data scientists, AI engineers, and business analysts, with starting packages ranging from 8.5 lakhs to 40 lakhs and a potential for up to 500% salary increase from their previous package. Aegis alumni are working with 500 leading corporate and startups like Deloitte, E&Y, KPMG, Reliance Retail, Morningstar, Nielsen, Red Hat, Go Air, Ford Motors, Teradata, Autos, Accenture, Vodafone Idea, Lenovo, Shoddy.com, etc. Don't wait, you can also launch your career in data science, analytics, and AI. Take positive step today. Explore PGP in data science offered by Aegis at aegis.edu.in. Welcome to Aegis School of Data Science, the best school for postgraduate program in data science, business analytics, and big data. We will work on live projects from the industry. Curriculum designed with the help of top data scientists and companies. Hands-on exposure to machine learning, stats, deep learning, NLP, Google TensorFlow, Spark, IBM Watson, AWS ML, and many more. Highly satisfied students with amazing reviews. Program delivered by the best data scientists. Program follows globally acceptable North American credit structure. Proud alumni working as data scientists with leading organizations. Participants can get opportunities for internships and final job placement with leading organizations. Aegis organizes Aegis Graham Bell Awards, Aegis Largest Data Science Congress Deep Learning Summit, Meetups, and Leadership Speaker Series. Network with the best data scientists and AI experts from around the world. Present your projects to the world. World-class delivery infrastructure and cloud learning management system. 
three delivery models, full-time, executive weekend classroom, and online live interactive. Add wings to your career and explore today at www.aegis.edu.in.